<laughs> SJ, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> you doing good? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to do that again. No, Just we're going. Just me, like, cracking up. We're, right. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> um, this is how we're starting. This is how it's going to be. How the heck are you all doing, right. SJ? I'm doing good. Doing all right. Yeah. How about you? That's good. I'm doing good. Can't complain. We're into 2024. We are started it off with a bang. And I can't wait for some more juicy goodness that we call Wrexham. I heard we're playing uh, Barrytown. Heard that's yeah, happening. Yeah, Barrytown United. Yeah. So uh, evidently there was many different berries um, before they got the right one. Sometimes you got to like, shop around. Like straw and raz and blue. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Kindergarten yes, jokes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if that's what you showed up for today, that's what you're going to get. Well, I am Rand. That is SJ. We are two sides of the same coin, which is American loving Rexamites. And we are going to be covering Barrytown today, taking a look at the team, uh, some of our players. SJ always brings the beautiful heat, the banger after banger of player profiles. And so let's just jump off before we get into Barrytown. Who are we looking at this week, SJ? And what do we need to so, know about them? Yeah. So, uh, player profile this week, I got Lily Jones. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just a kind of basic breakdown of her um, uh, club history and kind of matches she's been involved in and got a couple of little tidbits after that. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I'm so, ready. Uh, okay. I'm ready too. <laughs> okay, uh, so Lily Jones, our number 21, she is Welsh. She's 18. Uh, she is a midfielder. She also plays defense. A uh, little history on her. She came through the Girls Performance Center, which is part of Wrexham FAW Female Players Pathway. So okay. uh, they do under eights to under 16s. Um, and then I think uh, her, she played in that up to the under 12s. So, um, you know, nice history there. And then she, I couldn't find the date of the switch, but she played for Everton's under 14s for it seems like about a couple of years. Fishy on the, the exact dates. Again, hard to find all this information in one spot. But uh, okay, okay. and then so she came back um, in 2018. She played for the Wales national under 15s uh, against Portugal. So um, that's pretty cool. And then um, kind of forward a couple of years. She's been really busy. Um, she signed for Wrexham at 16. Um, for the senior team uh, in 2021. And then she has been doing double duty with the first team, the women's first team, and the under 19s. She did that for two years. She was captain of the under 19s. Um, and so, because those stats are kind of mixed together, I just combine them for um, her stats instead of trying to fish them out. So, mm -hmm. um, in 2021-22, she had a combined uh, goals of 2021-22. She had uh, combined for the under 21s in the first team. Um, she had 11 goals, 14 assists, and three yellows, which I don't think is that much. So I don't. Anyways, and then um, she also in 2022 played for the Wales national team again for the under 17s versus Sweden and France. Um, and she got some significant minutes in those matches where as before she kind of subbed in a little. So um, nice. Uh, and then she also that season made team of the week three times. So we got December 2021 and then January and March 2022. So damn kicking butt. Yeah. Uh, and then um, 2022-23 season, um, she was again on the under-19s and the uh, women's first team and 
the captain for the under 19s. Um, and that year she had uh, 18 goals, 20 assists and three yellows. Uh, and so um, that year, the um, you know, last season, they got back to back promotions for the under 19s. She was the captain as they got back back. back. <laughs> she, <laughs> they got promotion uh, while she was the captain for the uh, under 19s. So I thought that was pretty impressive. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, moving into this season, uh, 23, 24, she you know, was one of the um, players that when Wrexham women moved into the semi-pro status um, for the Adran Premier, she was the one of the first players that was signed. And uh, she actually signed when she was 17. She was the youngest player to wow. be signed in any of the, yeah, any of the league or the in the league for the list year. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, she's been called a prodigy at times. So mm -hmm. just recognizing like the greatness she's achieved already. And she's only 18. Like a fire starter. <laughs> Burning down <laughs> that the type house. Of prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she so does. I didn't, I didn't know that, that she had played for the, um, Welsh national team multiple times and yeah. that she was affiliated through the Wrexham, not Academy. There was a separate um, entity. What was that other thing? So I'm not, I, I think it's like a completely separate thing. I know that um, Wrexham didn't have Academy for a long time. I think it's a partnership, but it's the um, FAW female player pathway is the official name. Uh, and mm, then this okay. was, Wrexham's participation in it. My yeah, completely guess on, you know, just trying to, you know, put stuff together is um, that the teams Wrexham had for those um, unders team, you know, the under eights, 14, 16, whatever. Um, Wrexham has those teams and then there's a certain amount of oversight by the FAW that provides a structure for them Maybe to some learn. funding. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's that's about all I got. <laughs> all I got. It's <laughs> it's really vague, you know. It's so vague, but it's a partnership with the FAW and Wrexham, and it's a official again player sponsorship, you know, development. So, so, so SJ, uh, tell us yeah. when that um, FA sponsorship started, how long it ran for, who was in charge, uh, what type of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, first, let me put my cap on here no yeah i yeah and then it took me from yeah okay so anywho i to make sure i don't say dumb stuff on the mic and then you'll feed it in <laughs> I'll, that's i'll cut everything and only keep the dumb stuff which if anybody has watched any of these episodes they know that's what i do they're like how know, did you keep I'm all like the trash <laughs> I'm terrified of sneezing, like having just like mm. ugly pug mm -hmm. face, like ha. Ah. So, because yeah. yeah. it's like seven years bad luck or something if you sneeze, something like that, right? I mean, it, it's, I it's got like bad you break jokes, your mom's but, back or something. Yeah, no, that's you step on crack. That's why people <laughs> have to pull their pants up. <laughs> okay, that type of crack. Okay, all right, <laughs> that's where we were going. So, so Barry Town, huh? Yes. Uh, this very uh, time. Well, or, or okay. We... Or are you wrapped up with uh, your player no, profile? No, no, no. Sorry. So that's the. So that's the um, kind of her player history for as far as like on the pitch. Um, but a couple of little note tidbits. Um, welcome to Wrexham season two, mm -hmm. uh, episode six, 11 and 12 all featured the women's team. Uh, and Lily Jones had some nice meaty chunky bits in there and all three, uh, episodes. So, you know, we could do a shameless plug of if you haven't seen it now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the then, nobody that would watch this and has not seen it. But hey, there might be. If I know. You, wait, it's look, a prerequisite I'm, I'm interjecting. for this course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> you cannot get admitted into Wrexham 101 if you did not also watch Welcome to Wrexham 101. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. if there is anybody that's out there that did not see 
the series and is actually tuning in and like watching some of this stuff, power to you. Let us know inside the comment section. Like that's amazing. Um, I don't think there's many, if there's any of those people, but uh, there might be. Uh, but but yeah. so she she was featured heavily. Uh, good profile about her as well too, and her background, which pulled on all yeah. the heartstrings and just made yeah. you love her even more, love the team even more. Um, but yeah. yeah, sorry for interrupting you. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, one of my favorite bits of um, the episodes she is in is when she points out the brick because, you know, pe- uh, mm. fans bought bricks to help pay for the stands and stuff. Uh, and so she points out the brick that her dad is on. And I was like, that's the coolest. So uh, cue the waterworks. Then, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then currently, uh, just this uh, last couple of weeks, um, Lily Jones was announced as the new co-host for This Girl Can Play, which is a Dang. podcast that just came out. That's super cool. Have you watched any of the episodes? Um, I'm nodding my head. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's been a couple of the Rex women that have been on there, but Lily was one of the uh, first guests. And then I think she was uh, the first they- guest, right? I think so. Yeah, I think she was the first one. And then uh, so that um, I'm not sure if they're just doing like video or if they're doing the full formal podcast kind of list of outlet things. Mm. But um, but I would imagine they they, would. They seem well produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They can Um, afford to post to Apple and all that. Uh, Yeah. The the ones that cost money. It looks like they can do that. So, (laughs) yeah. Well, I mean, like they have a real studio like chairs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like people so, there. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry. So, I'm just completely derailing that's okay. you. That's okay. That's okay. So anyway, um, so the podcast yeah. was started by two dads um, of 11 year olds that currently play football. Um, uh, one of them plays for Connor's Quay. Is it Q? Connor's Key. Is- yeah. There we go. Uh, Connor's Key Nomads. Uh, and then the other one plays for Wrexham. Uh, so under 12s. So I, they basically said that the guys said um, when they they wanted to start the podcast because they were finding like, I don't know, barriers that they didn't know as men in the world existed, I guess. That's probably a really harsh way to look at it, but it's uh, a lot of credit to them that they saw the challenges their daughters were possibly facing and like wanted to bring light and try to like, you know, navigate some of those things. Um, Mm, Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, the kind of three, a couple of things that they said is, you know, promoting women's football is Mm. one of their primary things, but also um, talking about barriers, stigma and the future of women's football. So they've only had, I think, like four episodes out, but I really like the interviews they've done so far. I can see Mm -hmm. some promise and I can only imagine that Lily Jones is going to like add some good, good bits to that because, you know, yeah. They have two guys on there talking about women and interviewing women. <laughs> It'll be nice. Hey, to get that's up. what we do best. That <laughs> is our expertise. If there's yeah. one thing that we do well, it's telling women about women. Um, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong. I know. So I think she'll be a valuable uh, addition to the pod. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing that I tried to pull here. I was like, let's cover the women's game. Of course, I'm more than qualified as <laughs> to cover Welsh women's uh, sports. I'm more. Who who else could we possibly have? OK, SJ, we'll let you let you be <laughs> oh, a part of this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for granting me permission to speak. Aww. Was that the glass ceiling? <laughs> crash, crash, crash. I, I Here know, she comes. I, I didn't even know it was up there. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever is still watching this, I'm so sorry. So, um, this is, we're recording late as opposed to like an earlier one. So we've both uh, been through our day and now this is what you're getting. But yeah. Oh, you were speaking of sneezes. Are we going to get get one out? Look in the light. I, that always gets me. Are you one of those people you can like look at the light and makes you sneeze? Well, Mark said on uh, an episode 
that I had him on, I think it was the first one, he said, think pineapples, pineapples, pineapples in your head. I do remember that. And you won't sneeze. So yeah. I was looking at a light thinking pineapples, pineapples, pineapples. I don't know. They Either one of those. Cancel each other out. <laughs> I, it might. It still feels like it's back here. But you know what? We'll, we'll, per, we'll actually move on. A, you know? There's a genetic um, marker in DNA that uh, is gives you the look into the light sneeze or not. There's a gene really? that specifically for that, which is so weird and funny. But yeah. God. Anyway. I hate epigenetics. It's so, so confusing. Epi epigenetics? Yeah. Like eugenics or epigenetics? No, 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 I mean, no. Like, it's uh, so like, like uh, genetic expression. So it's like in your DNA, but whether it gets expressed or not, sometimes mm. comes down to environmental stimuli. Gotcha. Uh, just that just for the record, stuff. I am down for eugenics, as in I don't like it, not like I'm down for it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> eugenics. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, would you. Yes. I'm down. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is no. out of control, SJ. This is completely know, out of control. Reel it in. What do you got? Reel it in. <laughs> we haven't even covered Barry Town. I know. Oh, I mean, if you want to get a folk me to focus, you got to get me like six a.m. when I don't know my eyes exist yet, and I will just read a piece of paper that may or may not have words on it. Yeah. Otherwise, you well, fall in full well, I effect. Apo I, apolo I apologize for booking you so late. My bad. Uh, it's all my fault. Yeah. Um, 7 p.m. It's late. <laughs> Be before we move on to, to Barrytown, yes. uh, any, anything else about Lily Mae Jones that we need to know? Uh, I'm sure there's tons and tons of stuff that uh, we could learn about Lily Jones. She's welcome to come on the pod and give Oof. us all the extra details, you know, but um, that's the kind of outline of the research that I did was, you know, and again, just to give credit to, I pulled research that, you know, this information from Twitter, from the official channels for like Rexham's Club and mm -hmm. the Adran um, leagues and the Rexham's website and the you know, did some searches for uh, this girl can play and just try to shove it together. So I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing, but um, I don't know. Check the list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if anybody does know any contrary information, then let us know. Just like put it in the comment section or DM us on, on Twitter, X, whatever. Yeah. My, my I, inbox is always open. Feel free to say whatever. Yeah, and I actually would like it if somebody knows like contradictory information. Like, if I get something wrong, let me know because uh, chances are, if I get one thing wrong, I might think that source is reliable for the next person, and I'll get that wrong. So, I am mm -hmm. happy to learn new facts about people. Yeah, well, I learned a lot about Lily Mae Jones today, so I am pretty happy about that. And now looking at Barrytown, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll get okay. the get the facts out here. Uh, All right. So Barrytown United, Barrytown United uh, are currently seventh on the table with six points out of, out of. nine matches played. So yeah, a little bit rough. Uh, so they're currently on two wins, seven draws, and seven losses. That math does not add up. Oh wait, that's You're... their points. <laughs> yeah. Barrytown United uh, are seventh on the table. They've got six points currently. Uh, and their performance, they've got a goal difference of negative 21. Uh, that'd be 9, 4, and 30 against. So that's a little rough. Um, mm. We're still in the Adran Premier Phase 1. Uh, and we have round 10 is the match that... Um, Barrytown United is going to play against the Wrexham women. Uh, and then we last played them on October 1st. Uh, and then Wrexham won 5 1. And that mm. was at their um, their pitch, their grounds. So look, looking a little rough. Um, but 
players to look out for. Uh, so what I talked about Lily Jones doing double duty with uh, the under 19s and the first team they do. And I'm sure they have players that um, they consider, you know, kind of their main or feature players. Um, but I found a couple of players I thought were really interesting. Um, one of the gals name is first name India and last name S H A N A H A N Shanahan. I think it's like Shana na 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 na. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, this far, so far this year she's gotten two goals, but uh, last year she got twenty four goals uh, in her under nineteen division one. So she knows where the net is. For sure. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, and the under 19s, the Barrytown United under 19s came in third last year, um, significantly higher than the first team. So uh, so I, I thought she'd be a good player to look out for. And then uh, Sienna Stone um, was also on the under 19s last year. She so far this year has two goals and three assists. Um, and then. She, yeah, so she's, uh, and then she was on the under 17s before, oh God. Okay, so Sienna Stone is the other player to look out for. Uh, and then she's also under under 19s. Uh, and she, last year she was under the under 17s as well. Uh, and then she's gotten two goals and three assists. So she's, Oof. you know, kind of one of their... I don't know if you call it experience. It's only if it's like under 19s, but she's got a lot of minutes on the pitch. So I don't know. It's a couple of players I want to keep an eye on. Well, and only playing, let's say it's like 10 or 11 games, having three assists within 10 or 11 games. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you create those, those, you know, one game, one goal could be a deciding goal for a match. Yeah. So creating three chances like that, that's pretty good. For sure. Yeah, for a third nine goals, if she's contributing the assists for a third of them. A third, you know. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Quick math. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then let's see the discipline. Um, this is hard to find, but I think that Verytown have uh, 10 yellows in all competitions, and that would include the trophies and stuff also. Um, okay. But their subs have just had a really strong presence when they've come on. A lot of them, you know, are on the under 19 teams. So I just felt like, um, you know, maybe it's kind of like we talk about uh, our players that don't start regularly is that I'm guessing those under 19 players have like a hunger to prove themselves, not just to mm -hmm. get in the team every week, but also, you know, if they're able to catch somebody's eye and, you know, pull off some dazzling moments uh, when they do get their chance that, you know, they have a good chance of signing somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, that might they might be able to be on the first team. So I'm wondering how hungry their people are going to players, how hungry the players are going to be. Um, mm -hmm to really showcase their talents. And I know everybody wants to win, but I feel like besides that, there's kind of, um, I think when we've seen uh, Wrexham's men team play against teams that like Yeovil, um, where they don't have as much at stake in a way because they're really just trying to hold on. There is a bit of like recklessness and, um, mm. Not, not having to stick with a specific game plan and kind of winging it. And I think in those chances, that's when players who don't get a lot of minutes have a chance to shine because they mm. can kind of just hook something out of, you know, the air that might not have been a play that was planned or set up, but they can see a moment and follow through on that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, and for then, sure. Yeah. So... Uh, oh, and then I got a little tis history tidbit for you. Um, okay. okay. So anyways, uh, another little history tidbit I have for Barrytown United. Um, they were removed from the Adran Trophy um, by the, um, the league 
because they traveled to play on December 3rd for their match and the, the pitch conditions weren't good. And so the match was called off because of the bad pitch conditions. And then it was rescheduled for, I think it was uh, January 7th. Um, and then, oh, December 10th. It was rescheduled for December 10th. Uh, and then they went and the um, ref didn't want to call the match off. But when they assess the pitch, they um, I guess one of the things they do to see if the pitch is playable is they like try to bounce the the football and it just thud like there was no rebound with it because mm. the pitch was mm. so soggy. There was like muddy like divots and stuff. And so um Berrytown was concerned about injury. The ref admitted that there was waterlogged parts to the pitch, but said, I'm OK with you guys playing anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they appealed to the league for um, because they have basically forfeited. The ref said you can play. And they were like, yeah, but we don't want to get hurt. Like we're worried about our women getting injured mm -hmm. from this horrible pitch. So um, they basically forfeited the match, but they appealed. Um, they showed them all sorts of pictures and video of stuff. And the league was like, yeah, we don't care. You're still disqualified. Um, Damn. And yeah, yeah. And the thing that really sucks about that is um, it costs 2000 pounds each trip that Barrytown took to go try to play those matches. So Dang. for us, yeah, for like a smaller team to dish out 4,000 pounds and then also get kicked out of the trophy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I guess rules are rules, <laughs> you know, they have yeah. them in place. And if you're not going to follow them, then uh, there's consequences. <laughs> and I guess there's a statement to be made where I'm not going to play on a pitch and risk injuring my players. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, maybe that was the wise decision because maybe the pitch yeah. would have been too dangerous and it wasn't worth the risk. Even with all that money, it still wasn't worth the risk, the injury to the players or what could have happened. I'm sure their players are worth way more than 4,000 pounds. I mean, you know, and yeah. I was thinking, um, we, we, the men's team play Mansfield. Was it for the FA Cup? Uh, second round. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, and I don't know if you, huh? Um, was it the FA Cup? I got confused if it was that. Yeah, or the, it was uh, the FA Cup because I remember Elliot Lee talking about how like he came off the pitch and he was just soaked and filthy, just mm, mud mm -hmm, everywhere, mm -hmm. and he was like, "This is how a cup tie should go. Like this is great." But you could mm. see the ball like hydroplaning across the pitch on one end, like by the goal, and like literal like splashing. Of when they were yeah. running around and they were just all drenched because of the rain. Um, and, you know, with last year, our FA Cup and having two players get injured when we, you know, it's like I wouldn't want to risk the opportunity in the league for a cup that you're not deciding to play. Like you're forced to play like we're forcing you to put your players at risk and for this cup or you can choose to err on the side of caution and say, no, I'm going to keep my players healthy and fit and we're going to make the league a priority. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would walk away from it too. Yeah. And I mean, that that's, yeah, definitely because who knows what the right decision is and you got to kind of trust that the team was making the right decision in that moment. Um, unfortunately, they were penalized. I don't know all the details that surround it. Maybe it's much more controversial or maybe bury down everybody. It's like, hey, they were trying to duck a loss. They knew they were going to lose so that they uh, tried to get out of it. I, I have no clue. But um, yeah. as, as they... r rumors start, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll be the first one to set it. <laughs> I don't know. I would, I would guess they're winning some money for the trophy and they're going to say, you know, I don't yeah, know. for sure. As you've said before, you know, players don't usually play to lose. So, <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, my my hope is, is that, um, you know, it's unfortunate that they reviewed uh, the evidence that Barrytown collected and were like, yeah, that's still not good enough. 
But I would imagine if something like that happens over and over, that the league would look at that and say, well, mm-hmm. now we have a precedent and maybe we should change the rules. But but anyways, you know, it all boils yeah. down to a ref and ref's decisions. And we all mm-hmm. love all ref decisions, don't we? <laughs> They're never wrong, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would assume to be a god amongst mere mortals would be <laughs> the dream of yeah. all young aspiring refs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, they haven't had a great season, uh, but it's mm-hmm. such a small league that the separations of like the haves and the have nots are so great where yeah. people pushing for like, let's expand this into larger more teams in a larger league it's like yeah it definitely could call for it because there's not really a middle of the table a bottom of the table and the top of the table there's just two different halves there's the bottom and the top and there's nothing in the middle so it's kind of hard to tell where Barrytown would be if they had different teams to play how many more points they could have picked up and how many more games they could have played within a season Um, but yeah when they faced us it's kind of interesting because um that was rosie hughes's you know popping off party that (laughs) she she had the uh five goals in one match and that just is mind-blowing and so you've got to think that barrytown the players they still have that taste in their mouth that like hey look (laughs) rosie hughes we need to stop her and eliminate her (laughs) you know, yeah. build the Great Wall of China around her, whatever we need to do to make sure that she does not get the looks. Because I would imagine if somebody put five on you, you're like, all right, anybody else. If, yeah. you know, Pritchard makes one, Lily Jones makes one, whoever makes it, they're like, OK, yeah. we're fine with that. But not five more. Like, what's she going to do? <laughs> score six this time? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, I would definitely learning. have a plan for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got to have a plan. Your, your past yeah, yeah, because it, it's just going to look like an uh, egg on your face. It's going to be a little humiliating to if it already happened to happen again. So I expect them to come yeah. back, you know, like hard, you know, just ready to play, hoping for an upset. And if anything, having a game plan of how to shut down Rosie Hughes, uh, yeah. if they don't address those, then I mean, that's that's poor on the manager because you've those are things that will help the uh, self-esteem, even if you don't take a win or a victory. If you at least, let's say, score, like who did they have before? Um, Atwood, what was her name that scored oh, in the first one? I didn't write that down. For them. Yeah. Somebody, uh, Lucy, Lucy Atwood, uh, she scored okay. for them. So like evidently they they can score. They can score on Wrexham. So mm-hmm. something like that would put some confidence. And because, you know, this is the first leg of the season, Obviously, it's going to get split up and they're not going to be a part of that upper division, but it's still some confidence going throughout the season uh, as it finishes out preparing for next season that, hey, against those top teams, we can put goals in if we could just put together more. And then if you can shut down key players like Rosie Hughes, that's some confidence, too. And, you know, they're going to need it where they're sitting with six points, you know, in the league. Anything that's a positive is good to hold on to. So, I mean, we could... We could just talk about how they're going to get crushed and, you know, like make 30 minutes out of the different ways that they're going to lose. But it's like, where's the fun in that? Yeah. Give them a fighting chance. And yeah. Yeah. And I also think, um, you know, there's a it's not just the players on the pitch that decide, you know, who where a team ends up on the table. Right. Like you have a coaching staff, like a a coaches playing style um, or, you know, the training style, you've got, you know, accessibility to um, uh, you've got accessibility to like training and equipment and facilities, you know, all those things play a part of what it takes to win matches. You know, we've seen that with the Wrexham women bringing the conditioning coach in and like improvements mm. that they've had on the pitch. Uh, and, you know, it's all those little things that add up to a certain point. I want to give the players the grace of saying, like, you're playing 100 percent with what you were given. Like, you know, like, I don't want to okay. just say, yeah. like, 
all your players suck because that's really yeah. easy to do but it's so dismissive of like i'm sure all these players do have a history of training and have been playing for years and you know maybe they just need plugged into a different team that has a playing style that's you know more supportive of how they play but um I don't know. I don't go into looking at a team and, you know, looking at a match coming up as, you know, this is going to be our chance. We're going to crush him. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's just mean. It's just mean. Well, and, and if anything, the thing that we're trying to do is just raise the profile of the women's game. um, Hopefully give more voices for the women's game and, making that into something larger than it is, more accepting than what it is. And I guess at this point in time, hopefully there's a point in time where the women's game is so big that you could just trash talk and there's a huge like Derby <laughs> game and rivalry where people are like, yeah. I hate you and I can't stand like the ground that you stand on. It's like whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> hopefully we get yeah. to that point where we can have utter ignorance. But yeah, definitely <laughs> at this point in time, it's like, hey, rising tides rise all, raise all boats. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, there's another team out there, another Welsh team who's trying to put it together. They have dreams just like everybody else does. So, of course, yeah, you got to got to give them some respect so, for what they're doing and what they're trying to do and playing within the limitations of whatever their coaching staff and their playing staff. Um, the, they, like the other teams, have players that have full time jobs that they got to go and do. They've, <laughs> you know have families, <clears throat> have a life that they need to tend to. And football may be a priority of sorts, but sometimes there's other priorities in life. And as the women's game grows, you know, there's more opportunity for those full-time players, semi-professional to professional players. So hopefully, yeah, yeah hopefully uh, all the teams at Wrexham plays get to a point to where we can just talk crap about them and feel good about <laughs> it. But yeah, right right now, it just it don't feel so yeah. good doing that. <laughs> We, we can talk about all the um, tractors. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't yeah. I don't know who's. Well, Barry is outside of Cardiff. Um, mm. And so it's on that southern coast again. And um, it looks like a pretty built up area, at least from the satellite view. Uh, I was looking at the field where they where they play at. And um, if you remember, there's a track that goes around oh, the yeah. pitch. Yeah. So unfortunately, we won't get to see anybody doing some laps um, this weekend, (laughs) but one of those multi-purpose sports complex things. But yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, are you ready for some crests and some badges? Yes, I love the crest and badge. All right. Well, I pre-wrote some stuff down. So let me let me uh, let me grab this up. That's cool. Let me. um, Yeah. Do you have the badge up? Have their page up, but the badge is little. Oh, there's a lot going on. Unicorns and boats. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot. You ready? Um. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's a bunch. <laughs> this is a, this is actually a good one. <laughs> okay. So the blue uh, floor floor de lis. You know those mm-hmm. uh, floor de lis. Yeah. Yeah, those French ones. Like for us, what we'd see in like New Orleans or something like that. You know, we'd see a lot of those. Um, those symbols trace back to Lord David Davis, who built the Barry docks in the late 1800s and transformed Barry from a tiny village to a town. Okay. So that's what those symbolize. The red bars. So if you look at the unicorn on the left and there's some red bars going and then on the right hand <laughs> side, that like pendant also has some red bars. Um, the red bars come from. The Barry family motif, a Norman family who were granted land in Barry after the Norman conquest. Mm. And the silver unicorn supporters, uh, these are heraldry from the Earl of Plymouth, who owned much of the land. (laughs) This is those are heraldry. So um, they're representing the Earl of Plymouth, who owned much of the land in South Wales when football began to emerge. And the Earl's family also provided the land and name for Barry Jenner Park Ground. So that's the name of the Barry's Jenner Park Ground is the name of their stadium. And then, of course, they have the Welsh Red Dragon uh, on the bottom, a a (laughs) drake. And um, 
then uh, like all Welsh teams, I imagine have the red dragon. Uh, except for us, we don't put a red dragon on uh, the crest. Maybe we should do it. Maybe that should replace <laughs> the uh, the feathers. Yeah, the... I know, I know. There's some pushback on the feathers. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And the ish yeah. din. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So the sand and the sea at the bottom of the crest is symbolic of Barry's coastal location. And sure. so that blue and white with the waves on the bottom is the water. And then underneath the feet of the unicorns is sand. Okay. Um, and then there are uh, black diamonds on the sails of the ship. And that mm. is okay. to, to hint to the historic exporting of coal from Barry's world-renowned docks. Oh, all right. Then the phrasing on the bottom... I, I am going to butcher it. Um, Katan, Katanid Ki Kefianda, maybe? Uh, Kinid? I, the one I have is too blurry to, to read, and if I mm. try to read it, I'll squint and just... So what it, tra- what it translates is first stability, then justice, then progress. Oh, not too bad. And that's the uh, ad- adopted by the club as their motto. Um, this crest is another one that is the town's badge, also okay. used as the crest for the football team. So yeah, that's the um, that is the badge. There you go. Nice. I uh, I was looking at it and it looks almost like like right above the fleur de lis um, and under the boat mm-hmm. ship. Mm-hmm. It there's like a little green thing with some slits. Is it look? It looks like a. Um, a face mask from uh, a knight's of, helmet. Yeah, yeah, oh, coat of uh, yeah. like a armor face mask thing. Yeah, I didn't find anything helm, saying exactly what that was, but th- it would make sense because we've seen that on a lot that headpiece and mask. So yeah, it would make sense. A lot of the nobility and fighting for your land, etc. Um, maybe if somebody knows what that is, then definitely let us know. Maybe it's something like a rampant lion and it's just something that's common that has a name that I didn't find. But yeah, that was the crest and badge. The name is is not incredible. I'm not saying that Barry Town is a horrible name, but I'm just saying <laughs> Barry and Town. Um, there's some yeah. debate on there if Barry comes from a name or if um, Barry is hinting towards the Welsh word bar, which means uh, hill, because it is on that coastal hilly area where we had uh, Wimbledon, you know, and that Dun uh, was uh, yeah. was meant to hill um, or like a large plateau. So this also could mean that bar for Barry could be, or it could be a Welsh surname, um, last name, um, Barry, which comes from the Welsh word, um, I think it's like Bere, 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 um, and it's B A I R E, and then throughout time getting anglicized turned into Barry over the years. I, so the, the English like to do to everything. They're yeah, like, the we'll English. take that word. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like any anything with languages over time. Things become pronounced differently over time, spelled differently over time, depending on if there was like vowel and consonant yeah. shifts that occurred. And especially with this dating back so far back to like the 12th century, um, oh. you've got you've got to think that like places that you had Norm, Norman conquests. And so there's people have been there for a while uh, referring to it as a specific area in their own languages and, and then into what we call English now. And I'm. Around that time, you're going to have stuff that either morphs because of pronunciation, but also you didn't have written language until later on. Yeah. And then once you add written language, then that changed a whole bunch of like spelling and pronunciation for a lot of peoples. Um, but yeah, yeah. So pretty straightforward town, except for there's no definitive uh, consensus on this is where the name came from and what it exactly means. Um, there... Also was um, Saint uh, Baruch, and also has a connection to the island because there's a Barry's Island just right off shore. So okay. there's a church that that Saint Baruch was on, and the remnants and the ruins are still on that Barry Island too. So there's a lot of bar and bear that is around within names that could have contributed to, 
And so it's very hard to tell. I don't know if there is a settled consensus within the town, if there's something that people say is most probably. All I could find was a couple of competing stories. But yeah, yeah. those are that's that's my contribution. That's what I found. <laughs> Uh, and then I remember uh, Mark saying on one of his Ask Rexum pods that uh, the United generally allude in uh, commonly alluded to two teams merging. Mm-hmm. Is that or the more. case? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Within Barrytown, they actually did. I mean, hey, good question. Good question. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. No, they're actually I think was four to five um, different mergers of different Barry teams. They went under different names throughout history before becoming um, Barrytown United. And so there was at least four other names uh, that referred to what collectively they considered the club's history. Okay. And so, so that did finally become, and I forgot what year it was, but it finally did become Barrytown United. So um, there were some other iterations before then and um, when playing in other leagues as well, not just the league, the Welsh league that they're playing in now. But yeah, Yeah. very good question. That is exactly what is going on there. (laughs) Um, um, Well, oh, I I just kind of respect that history. You know, Wrexham has been Wrexham since 1864. But, uh, you know, that determination to like keep a team in your town through Mm. thick and thin um you know Wrexham has done that but being able to do it for the same team it's got to be devastating to you know lose your team and have things uh you know for whatever reason uh end for you know different teams that you're trying to get going for your community and so I don't know. I got respect for towns that are like, we're going to take any piece that we can and, you know, put it together and we'll take some of this team and some of that team and we'll hook up and, you know, make it official for our town. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like cooking, you know, you add a little, a <laughs> little bit of the recipe, you add a little sprinkle some love inside there and it all works out. <laughs> um, you, you know, We kind of talked about somewhat of the expectations based upon the form and what had been played earlier on the season. But let me still throw it to you. Any predictions? Well, uh, we know that Dorian is out hurt, so that's going to affect our performance. Um, And then, I don't know. I mean, you know, we came off a loss for um, Cardiff City for the trophy. Uh, that, you know, that always creates a, um, I don't know, that always puts a damper in things, you know, a little bit, right? You like lose a match, get get uh, dumped out of a tournament. Like, it always sucks. So I'm hoping that won't, you know, get anybody discouraged uh, for Wrexham. But uh, I'm hoping it's like the men and, you know, they take a loss to heart and then they're just come roaring back. Uh, like yeah we just saved all those goals for this match and we're gonna dump them all in so i don't know i just have confidence in our team you know our players are great like i mentioned they've been going through all this conditioning and um with uh barrytown uh i see a lot of struggle performance having trouble finding the back of the net and at the same time having trouble defending their goal so, um, I don't know, the Wrexham women really like exploiting that kind of, uh, that kind of, those st- kind of statistics. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be like, I want to say 6-0 and that just sounds mean. Oof. So I'm going to say 4-0. Yeah. 4-0. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm going to kind of go for, Rosie has to get in a goal, right? She's going to have to put one in the net. That's going to have at least a minimum of one. Let's say Lily May puts one in, Pritchard puts one in, um, Kara Jones puts one in. Um, I could see five. I could see five again. So Lightfoot. I'll go. Didn't she? I'll go. She was the. Oh yeah, Lightfoot. Uh, she, she hit one yeah. last game. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I can see five. And let's say they scored one before. Maybe they come a little bit harder. I'll go five two. 
go five two. Okay. I, okay. I feel like we're not being yeah. mean with that. I feel like we're being realistic. You know, basing it off of previous history, we're not being jerks. Yeah. yeah. I hope we're not being jerks. But if we are, <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean it, Barry. I'm sorry, Barry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to personify I'm very, very the town sorry. of Barry. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, there you heard it here. Straight from SJ's mouth, um, six nil is what it's going to be. So <laughs> buckle up for the weekend. It's going to be a fun and tasty one. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to watch girls play again. It's going to be awesome. And uh, SJ, anything else before we get out of here? I I think that's it. I got uh, got all my notes out. I think I've checked everything off. It it was a. Uh, mm. Uh, it was a nice uh, a little research session. There was a lot of stuff to be able to put in there. So nice. I think we got it all. Yeah, you, you nailed it. You knocked it out the park. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Make sure I never call this out, but I'm going to call it out because it's a women's episode and it doesn't get the coverage that it deserves. And I'm not saying our like episodes don't get the coverage they deserve. Just the women's <laughs> teams and the women's sport yeah. doesn't get the coverage that it deserves. So yeah. hit that like button, subscribe, share the video, promote it, promote the women's game so that we can lift up and be celebrating and get to the point where next time we're talking about Barry, the sport and the team is so big, we can say, we hope they die and all of their <laughs> children watch. I, I and feel okay about it. Right on the vine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But at this moment right now, we're like, well, we wish them the best. We wish yeah. them the best. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we hope that everybody um, is, is has a good day and a good yeah. career and future. I hope there's Until... no injuries. I hope there's no injuries. That's yes. what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's commendable. Well, thanks so much, everybody, <laughs> for tuning in. Um, what, what emoji do they drop this time, SJ, to say that they is it some female fighting power superhero something i don't know <laughs> yeah can we get one of these oh is that a, is to, that a you'll have to like photoshop in a muscle because i i don't have one do the, is there a the muscle? is there like a rosy riveter emoji is there emoji of a woman doing that or is that uh, i don't think emojis are that progressive okay. Not that, yeah there, there well, if there's might, a rosy wonder... riveter one then yeah yeah. I wonder if there's one, um, you know, because there's all like the occupations emojis. I wonder mm -hmm, if there's mm -hmm. like a construction emoji with like a lady with the hard hat. There is. There actually is. Yeah. yeah for we'll sure. pretend it's a riveter. <laughs> yeah. In yellow and in non-yellow. Yeah. All of those <laughs> options are available now. I wasn't paid to say that, but I felt like I was. <laughs> and in this season's of emoji, if you download right now, you can get yellow and all the other colors. <laughs> All right. Well, we've we've um, we've went off the rails enough that this one's going to be a fun editing session. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> have a great night. We'll see you all on Sunday. And hopefully we're talking about three more points and we're up in the town. Yeah. Up the town. Up the town. And we're out. OK. Whew.